In this video, I'm going to talk about I squared C, or two-wire interface. I squared C is a serial communication protocol that allows communication over two wires, hence the two-wire interface. The two wires are SCL and SDA. SCL is the clock, and SDA is the data. So what's the benefit of using I squared C or two wire interface? In many cases, you'll need to plug your microcontroller into many different devices, but you only have so many pins to use for various peripherals or devices. A device could be, let's say, a thermometer. Another device could be EEPROM. Another one could be an accelerometer, or it could be something of your choosing, something that you create yourself. And that's another microcontroller that be that could be controlling something like an LCD, or an LED, or whatever you can think of. You can now see that your single microcontroller would probably not be able to support all of these peripher peripherals with the pins that it has. Let's say you can you would use your um, accelerometer on the, the analog to digital converter. The same thing with the temperature controller, you'd use the same set of pins. The memory would be going to another interface, maybe the, um, the serial peripheral interface. So that's another set of pins. And the LCD would use four or eight pins, and that would be a, quite a big number of pins. And an LED would use some more pins um, individually. But there's a way to do it using the two wire interface where you have all of these peripherals on two lines, only using two of your, your pins. The two-wire interface is set up like this. You have the microcontroller, and it doesn't have to be a single microcontroller. You can have two microcontrollers on the same I squared C interface. And that is connected to the SDA line and the SCL line. And this is the master. The master is gonna act like Simon says, because the master tells the line to stop and start. The peripherals, whether it's going to be an accelerometer or memory or a sensor, another sensor, let's maybe it's a thermometer or whatever you want to control yourself. Another microcontroller that acts as a slave. And all of these peripherals are slaves and they're going to be connected to the SDA and SCL lines. But there is another line you have to consider, and that is the VCC, the voltage. And both of these lines need to be tied high using a resistor. So you put a resistor here, and you put another resistor here. You're probably asking yourself, why do we need resistors? Well, the SCL and the SDA lines are open collector lines. That means that the devices actually controls the base of a transistor. And this is the collector and this is the emitter. The collector in this scenario, the SCL and SDA lines, is not connected to to anything, it's just floating. And generally what you do in a, in a transistor, you connect the collector to a voltage. And it's a voltage generally of your preference. The base controls this transistor and will allow the current to flow through the transistor once the base is, is engaged or, or brings the transistor to a state that allows the, the current to flow through. So this the SCL and SDA lines starts from here. This is this is where it is and it needs to be pulled up by some some type of resistor. And the emitter is grounded. So we are concerned about this one and it needs to be tied high. These resistor values are very important. There is a minimum and a maximum value that you're allowed to use. The technical document by the inventor of the company that invented I squared C NXP semiconductors or Philips semiconductors can be found here.
The user manual is quite long and technical, but I'll be going over a lot of the, the main points of this document and how to use the I squared C protocol. When you have many devices, I'm going to draw the VDD on the bottom here, or VCC. When you have a lot of devices on these lines, the SDA and the SCL, the bus capacitance or the capacitance of these two lines increases. As it increases, it takes time for the data or the clock to register on these lines. That is called the time constant. Don't worry about that. You really only need to worry about the bus, bus capacitance if you have a lot of devices. If you do have a lot of devices, that means you're doing a more complex project, which means you're going to have to have the tools necessary to measure the bus capacitance. It's also going to increase if you have resistors going to these SDA and SCL lines. And the reason why you would have resistors going to these lines is if you needed to have some kind of protection for the devices if there are any spikes on the lines. But I wouldn't worry about that right now. We're only worried about getting the values for these resistors. Just for your reference, the maximum capacitance you can have on this line is 400 picofarad. You can also have as many as 128 devices on these lines. Whichever one is the least, either 400 picofarad or the number of devices. The higher capacitance you have on the lines, the lower resistance you want for these resistors. And this will change for standard mode, fast mode, and then there's a fast mode plus. For this exercise, we'll only be considering the standard mode. The fast mode and the fast mode plus, you have to be very specific with your resistor values. Let me give you some rule of thumb values for the resistor very little to no capacitance, you can use a value between or up to 120,000 ohms. A moderate capacitance between 100 to 0 picofarad, you can use between 10 kilo ohms to 120 kilo ohms. As you go higher from 100, let's say between 100 and 200 picofarad, you're going to need a value lower than 10,000, more like in the range of maybe 4.7 kilo ohms to about 10 kilo ohms. To be safe, I would use somewhere around 4.7 to 10 kilo ohms. If you want to get very specific and very technical, you can use this formula for the, for the maximum. TR is the time constant. This is a coefficient and CB, C sub B, is the capacitance in picofarad. And the CB, C sub B, which is the picofarad, will be measured, would be a measured value on the SCL and SDA lines. The minimum is a function of the voltage, which is VDD or VCC minus VOL, and that's the maximum value, over IOL. You can assume VOL to be 0.4 and IOL to be 3. And that all can be looked up on a table in the document specified earlier. The device or peripheral must be an I squared C compliant device. This is easily determined by the pin specifications for that device. If you see an SCL or SDA on the pinout for the device, then you know it's an I squared C device. I'll be using the ADXL345 accelerometer for this demonstration. We can see on this portion of the board we have the SC, SCL and the SDA pins. The actual pins are on the bottom of this chip here. I'll be using an AT Mega 324 or 644 microcontroller for this project. 